Hi, Abundant Life Small Groups. I'm Krista Clark, an associate pastor at ALC, and I'm here to bring the lesson tonight, and we're going to talk about how to overcome the spirit of rejection. Several years ago, our church put out this publication magazine called Present Truth, and in this particular issue, I got the privilege of interviewing a couple of wonderful women. One of them was a Palestinian Christian woman, and the other one was a Jewish Christian woman. Now, Miriam, the Palestinian woman, had family in Bethlehem, and they were being persecuted from time to time from Jewish rules there, at, or Israeli, Israeli government. And uh, Cheryl, the Jewish woman, she had lived through the Six-Day War between Jews and Palestinians in the late 60s. She was actually there. Both of these women had a lot of resentment and hatred for the other nationality, but God, saved both of them. They received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and they took on a new identity. Instead of their nationality, they learned to take on the identity of being in Christ. And because of that, God drew them together and they became very close friends. In Paul's day, he had to deal with some of these same prejudices. The Gentiles and the Jews had different customs and rules, and some of the Jews were telling the Galatian Gentiles that they had to take on some of the Jewish tradition to be accepted in Christ. So Paul wrote this Galatian letter, and he had some very strong words to convince the Gentile Galatians that they were accepted and loved in Christ, not because they followed some type of tradition of the Jews. So we're going to read Galatians 3, 25 through 28. And now that the way of faith has come, we no longer need the law as our guardian. For you are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. And all who have been united with Christ in baptism have put on Christ like putting on new clothes. There is no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus." These were incredible words from Paul. He was talking in, to a society that there was, the men and the women were treated very differently. The Jews and the Gentiles were treated very differently. And of course, the slaves and the free were treated differently. So Paul came in and he's giving this gospel good news of faith, <clears throat> excuse me, and he's saying, the cross levels society. It brings equality in Christ, that all of God's children are loved by Him. Here's some lessons we can take from this passage about overcoming that spirit of rejection. Firstly, we find that we are all children of God in Christ Jesus. We are called into the family, and our daddy is the creation of the universe, and we're called to be part of the family business. That family business, we're going to be doing the works of Jesus in the earth today. And we find the first commission, the first order of business in what the Creator wants us to do in Genesis 1, 27 through 28. He said, So God created human beings in His image. In the image of God, He created them, male and female, He created them. Then God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and govern it rain over the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, and all the animals that scurry around the ground. And then in Genesis 2.15 it says, The Lord God took the man, put him in the Garden of Eden, to work it and to keep it. That's right, He told him to work. <laughs> he told him to work. And that was before the fall. That was before sin entered the picture. He was calling and commissioning man and women to work the earth. We find our second Great Commission to our Father God's business in the, next, in the New Testament <clears throat> where Jesus said, Therefore go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you, and be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Jesus did not say, make disciples of some of the nations. And he also didn't say, go into the world and make everybody like Americans. The Lord loves every tribe, every nation, every people, and he wants all of them involved in the family business. There are no second class, second rate callings and assignments in the kingdom of God. All of his children have important jobs. 
A second lesson we can learn is because we have the same Father, we are siblings with Jesus and with one another. We should have family resemblance. We should look like Jesus. Inwardly, we are resembling Him, having the fruit of the Spirit, um, being part of the same family. We recognize our brothers and sisters in Christ. You know, sometimes siblings squabble. We fight, we argue. But if we'll take a step back and realize we're all part of the same family of God, that's what the Lord's wanting. That's what He's wanting us to realize is it? we want to have family resemblance to Jesus. And thirdly, if we have our identity in anything other than Jesus, we compare ourselves to others and we measure ourselves and others by the outward and by works. We cast judgment about ourselves and about others. When we compare ourselves to others, we do one of two things. We either feel inferior or superior. I'm going to say that again in case you missed it and heard something in the background. So if we have our identity in anything other than Jesus, we compare ourselves to others and measure ourselves and others by the outward and by works and we cast judgment. And when we do that, we will be, when we compare ourselves to others, we will be feeling inferior or superior. And that's not a good way to go. I think we've all made the mistake sometimes of using the wrong measuring stick and casting judgment about what others are doing. I know I've been very guilty of it. Um, and you know what? Rejection is often the fruit of judgment. Rejection is often the fruit of judgment. So looking back, let's remember Galatians 3.27, all who have been united with Christ in baptism have put on Christ like putting on new clothes. It's important to keep our Jesus on. Keep our Jesus clothes on. We look good. No one wants to see us when we take off our Jesus clothes. It's not pretty. And we need to recognize that the person that God has called us to be, honor other people for who God has called them to be, embrace the cross, let our old self, our old identity die, and let our true identity come out. Because if I am dead to my old self, then that spirit of rejection cannot hurt me. I'm re accepted and loved in the beloved in Jesus. See Jesus in others, honor and respect who they are and what God has called them to do. I hope these thoughts help you have a good discussion tonight. There are some discussion questions that follow. Thank you for letting me share.